Hey guys, in this video, I am going over joint immobilization of the shoulder, the right shoulder for this video. In your inner EMT skills, when you get a joint injury, it tends to be the shoulder, so that's why I'm gonna cover that. There are two videos for this topic. The first video, I'm going over every single step of the skill for the inner EMT, but I'm also going to explain why you do what you do as you go through your skill. In the second video, I am only going to cover the skill. So what I mean by that is that I'm going to go through the skill as if I was an EMT student and do it as you should do it for the NREMT for you to pass. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. First thing you want to do is you want to tell the proctor BSI. I have all my BSI on, so body substance isolation. That tells the proctor that you have everything you need on your body to not get contaminated. So your gloves, goggles, gown, whatever you need for the skill to be safe, you have it. Next thing you want to do is you want to get the arm and you want to maintain it in place in a position of comfort. So this tends to be a pretty good position of comfort for your patient. And what you're doing by supporting the arm like this, if it is a shoulder injury, is you're taking all that weight off of that shoulder, that joint, and you're making the patient feel better and it's not gonna aggravate that shoulder as much, that joint. Next, I'm gonna tell my patient to maintain that arm right there with their other hand, or I can have my imaginary partner go ahead and maintain the arm in place while I get my gear ready. So I'm going to have my imaginary partner maintain this arm in position right here, okay? Next, I'm going to get my gear. A triangular bandage tends to work for this pretty good. Um, you can use other gears if you need to. It's all really based on consideration and your patient size, and I'll cover that when I get to it in a, in a few seconds, okay? So as far as your triangular bandage goes, usually, not usually, always, you have two corners with long ends and one with a short end. The one with the short end, you wanna make a knot on it, okay? What this knot is going to do is, go, is, is going to support the elbow in place and it'll just kind of fit snug right there in that little edge. There are different ways to put this triangular bandage on. I teach one way, there are many different ways. No way is wrong as long as the job gets done and it gets done right, okay? There's principle and preference. Preference is how you put it on. Principle is what needs to be done, okay? So, on the short end where the knot is at, I'm going to Put the shoulder in there and I'm going to get the material that's between the patient, between the patient and the arm and I'm going to put that material, that end, on the, on the side of the shoulder injury. The material that goes outside, that's kind of just flapping outside of the patient. I am going to bring that on the opposite side of the injury. And what I'm gonna tell my patient is to go ahead and let all the weight go on that arm. That way if it drops, you know that you can kind of pick it up and just snug it back on top and then tighten it as you need to. I'm gonna tighten that around my patient And this is the best you're going to do for securing above and below the injury site for a shoulder injury. The next step is get a swath. So you can use another triangular bandage if you have to, or if you need to, it doesn't really mat matter as a swath. And bring it over your patient and make sure that you bring this, this side, you put this material under the armpit or under the arm, the uninjured arm. That way your patient has that arm free to go and they can do whatever they need to and then tie it off. If your patient is larger, you can also use just a regular, another type of bandage, okay? What I do not recommend you do 
is I don't recommend that you use an elastic type of bandage. I have seen students fail. It really depends on the proctor because they say if it's elastic, the arm can still move around. So by putting the swath on your patient, you have completely secured that extremity and that joint shouldn't move as much. The last part is I'm going to recheck my CMS, okay? So I'm going to check for a pulse. Is my pulse present? It is. Motor, go ahead and squeeze my fingers. Awesome. Which finger am I touching? The pinky. And you're done with the scenario. You're making sure by checking CMS, you're making sure that there is still circulation going through your arm. What I forgot to mention earlier is when you initially check CMS, if it's not present, if you have no pulse, motor, or sensory, that's the only time that you may want to consider putting that joint back in place. On the next video, I'm just gonna go over the skill by itself without any explanation. Go ahead and leave some comments below and I will see you in the next video.